So let's, let's jump into this. Tonight, I want to talk about the unselfish lover. The unselfish lover. <laughs> That's what we're going to talk about, the unselfish lover. Here's what I believe. I believe that the primary interpersonal goals of marriage or a serious relationship are these. Enjoyment, fulfillment, and contentment. Enjoyment, fulfillment, and contentment. That's what we look for in a broad, in a broad stroke in our marriages. That's what we look for in our dating relationships. We want enjoyment, we want fulfillment, and we want contentment. The person uh, that enjoys their relationship, the person who is fulfilled in their relationship becomes content in their relationship. There are two components of the enjoyable, fulfilling relationship that lead to contentment. Number one is individual satisfaction. I, I, I say in one of the books that you've got to remember that there are two individuals in the couple. And, and even though when you get married, God makes us one, there's two, two individuals. And there needs to be individual satisfaction in a relationship. Like the whole old adage, one plus one plus one equals one. You know, the, the male, the female plus God equals one. But please understand, uh, if, if I've got to be a zero in order for us to be a one, then I'm not satisfied. I, 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 can't, I can't disappear in order for us to be a couple. And so the individual satisfaction is critically important. But then the second thing is what I call relational communion, that we come together to be in communion with each other. There is a communion, two people coming together, blending together. There is a communion that happens. Now, what ends up happening is that selfishness will inhibit relational communion which decreases the probability of consistent enjoyment, fulfillment, and contentment. Please hear me. Selfishness is going to kill your relationship. It's, it's going to kill it. it. It may kill it instantly, or it may have what I call a termitic effect. It becomes a termite, and it just eats away, and nobody knows it. And then all of a sudden, it starts to show, and then you pull back the layers, the walls of the relationship, and you recognize the house is just about gone. And that's what ends up happening when people ghost you. In some cases, after a long relationship, they've really been struggling, and they just haven't had the courage. And then all of a sudden, and this actually happened, a man went to the store. He says, I'm going to the store to get a soda, and never came back. He never came back. I'm going to the store, get a soda. He never came back. We, selfishness is going to kill the relationship. So let's, let's, let's get a definition of, of selfish. I'm hurrying because i got a lot to cover. Selfish defined, devoted to or caring only for oneself, concerned primarily with one's own interests, benefits, welfare, etc., regardless of others. That's a selfish person, caring only for oneself, concerned primarily with one's own interests, benefits, welfare, et cetera, regardless of others. Now, I want to take another look at that, at that definition because I think there's a point there. Let me read it this way. Devoted to or caring for oneself, concerned with one's own interests, benefits, welfare, et cetera. And I want to suggest to you, there's no problem with that, with that definition. No problem. You need to care for yourself. You need to be uh, concerned about your own interests, benefits, and welfare. Because here's what I believe. Individual self-care is primary and paramount to a relationship. If I don't take care of me, then I'm giving my partner less than what she's supposed to have. See, what some people do is that they, they abandon themselves. They ignore themselves under this pretext of sacrifice. 
and I'm just going to sacrifice and I'm just going to be there. And what you don't understand is that if there is no you, there is no relationship. So you have and I have to lead the effort to keep ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually fit to be a good partner. I want to say that again. It is your job to lead the effort in making sure that you are physically, mentally, spiritually fit to be in a relationship. If you don't take care of you, then you're giving your partner less of a partner. Now, here's the problem. Some people will take that because they're selfish. But other people will encourage you to take care of yourself because there's a certain dimension of care that has to come from self. It can't come from a partner. Let me say that again. There is a certain dimension of care that has to come from self. It can't come from your partner. You want your partner or your future partner to fix too many things. That's too much weight. That's too much weight. You had a bad family uh, growing up. You want them to fix that. So you want them to fulfill all the emptiness that you had growing up in your family. Then you had a bad previous relationship, and then that jacked you up, and you want them to overcome all of that. No, we, that's too much work. That's just too much work. That's just too much work. I didn't show up to fix you. Showed up to be with you. I showed up to be with you. I didn't show up to fix you. It's your job to take care of yourself. Now, here's the problem. What I did was, is I just took some words out of the definition. Devo here's the problem with the selfish person. Devoted to caring only for oneself. Concerned primarily with one's own interests, benefits, and welfare regardless of others. See, the selfish person goes beyond self-care that's necessary for the good relationship. The selfish person is just out for him or herself. And you just join their parade. You just join their parade. I was doing an interview earlier uh, today about this whole issue, and we were talking about uh, senior citizens dating. I did this show about uh, dating over 65, and I had people who came and talked about, uh, you know, what they wanted out of dating uh, as a senior citizen, and uh, some of the stuff that we said off air, I can't say in church, because I was like, ooh, that's for real? That's what you want? I said, okay, I, I, this is a Christian show, so we got to, you know, but, but one of the things that we figured out is that people of that age, they're so set in their ways, they're looking for somebody to just fit into their flow. This is not a negotiation. This is not we're getting ready to build a life. No, uh, all I need is you to be added to my mix. And, and I, okay, I, I saw some heads nod. I'm going to have to pray in here. Uh, um, but what I discovered is, in a different way, in younger generations, it's the same. Especially when you go into relationships, I'm going to deal with this in a minute, when you go into relationships always thinking that you're the most important person in it. Okay, okay. Let's, let's go on. What makes a selfish lover? First of all, it's character. Some people just selfish. It ain't nothing deep. Some people are just selfish. That, that's their character. And if they are selfish, you're not going to change them. And, and you, can't, uh, you can't play games with your own head and ignore the fact that they're selfish. Watch this. And when a person is selfish by character, they can intermittently be unselfish but they will eventually get back to who they really are. So you can't date the special occasion them. You, 
You got to date the everyday them. And if the everyday them is that their character is that they're selfish now, uh, some people, their parents made them selfish. Because they spent their whole childhood, adolescence, and young adulthood hearing from their parents how wonderful and how great they are. You're the best thing in the world and blah, 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 and this and that. And, you, and so you step into the relationship like somebody should be happy just because you allowed them in your space. Okay, fellas, I'm going to need you all in a minute. Uh, I, I don't leave your boy hanging. I'm going to need you all in a minute. Um, I got sick of this thing on social media about a couple years ago, this whole thing of uh, there was all these, these memes and all these tweets about, you know, know your worth and, and make him, you know, know your worth and add tax and all of that foolishness. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got a whole lot to get to. I got to hurry. I, it, it, it annoyed me. It annoyed me. And fellas, here's where I need your help. Because I do, a lot of women's, I do a lot of women's events as well. Because one of the things that we have learned now that in, in your, in your gender-specific conferences, you need to hear the perspective of the other gender. So now I'm the dude preaching a lot of women's conferences. And one of the things that I talked about with this whole thing is that some of you, uh, y'all rode that too far. Because guess what? Uh, your worth cannot be determined by you. No, 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 no. Your value can be determined by you. But I determine your worth to me. Okay, okay. I, I, fellas, I told y'all, I'm gonna need y'all. Y'all, y'all, I, I lost some of the sisters. Please understand. You, you can't tell me what you worth to me. You, you, okay, let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. Okay, sis, y'all, y'all getting upset. Let me prove it to you. Let me prove it to you. See, some of the people who voted me to come back ain't gonna vote me the next time. Let me prove it to you. You walk into your, you, okay, you walk into your favorite store. You see a dress you like. It's your size. Uh, you like the pattern. You like the material. You like all of that. And then you check the tag. You check the tag and you say, uh-uh, I ain't paying that for that. You walk out. Somebody comes in 10 minutes later your size they see the same dress they they like the material they like the pattern everything it hangs well everything's good they pull they turn over the tag and they say oh i'm taking this right now same dress same material same size it was worth it to one person but it wasn't worth it to another person Please understand, I'm trying to help you, sis. Just because he doesn't want you, it doesn't lower your value. It just wasn't worth it to him. Your value cannot go up and down based upon what somebody else views as your worth. <laughs> it's a matter of worth. Watch this. Uh, there are some things about you that it ain't worth it to put up with for some people. And for many of us, watch this, because we were shaped 
by our parents telling us how special we are and how wonderful you are and you need this kind of person and you need that kind of person and they never talk to you about what you were going to contribute. They talked about you, talked to you about what the person had to have in order to be in your space. That's not relational communion because somebody's going to show up and say, I'm sorry, you are not, the sun does not rise and set on you to me. What do you bring to the table? And when you say, I'm just me, I'm like, no, no, no. Some people do not show up in relationships to contribute. They only show up in relationships to receive. They are selfish by character. But also, people are selfish in relationships by consent. Some people remain selfish in the relationship because you let them. I believe this as it relates to all relationships, not just romantic relationships, but friendships and that type of thing. Uh, I believe that you can't have a whole lot of real friends. And it's not has nothing to do about the nature and character of people. There's only so many people who can put a demand on your time and attention. There's only so many people who can put a demand on your time and attention. If you are in a relationship with a selfish person and you never place any demands on him or her, then they are now selfish by your consent. And if you are messed up on the inside where you think that you got to put up with this because you, are, you have a low assessment of your own value because somebody else has confused value with worth, then you will allow stuff you shouldn't be allowing. And it happens, and let me say this, it happens often, and, I, and I'll testify, I was guilty of this. I was guilty of this. I was selfish by the consent of my family. I was selfish. And the reason I was selfish by the consent of my family is because I thought that what I did trumped everything else. I thought that since I was the preacher and I was the pastor and I was the man of, the man of God and I was the one uh, who was serving God in ministry and, and was the pastor of my church and, and the provider for the family, I, I thought that then my schedule and my commitments took precedent over everything else. And, and, and my family allowed me to do it. And I kept doing it, and in many cases, to the deterioration of my marriage. And I've seen it happen over and over again. We, we, we stop uh, deifying, leaving God as the deity, and we start deifying our service to him. And then once we deify our service to him, then everybody needs to understand who you are in God. So you don't have time to be a real friend. You don't have time to be a real uh, uh, mate. You don't have time because you're too important. And when people let you do that, then it, it becomes very detrimental. You, you got to understand that. Please understand, you can't give that constant consent. People are selfish by consent. People are selfish by character. I got to hurry. And some people, watch this, are selfish by conditioning. Conditioning. Here's what I mean. Um, because you make no demands on the relationship, then you condition yourself to be ignored. You condition yourself. And there are some of us who are so driven in what we do that you need to put a consistent demand on us. Otherwise, you're going to get ignored. So here's what you do. Uh, it's your birthday, and you, you tell your partner, never mind, it's no big deal. 
Okay, don't, don't worry about it. It, it, it don't be. And they say, well, if something came up at work, don't worry about it, it's no big deal. And that keeps happening. And Christmas comes up and that keeps happening. And this comes up and that keeps happening. Watch this, if you keep making it not a big deal, I'ma make it not a big deal. So if you don't put a demand on the relationship, if you keep telling people you don't matter, guess what? You ain't gonna matter. And you'll be waiting on them to care, and you taught them not to care. You taught them not to care. Let me hurry. Here's some basic traits of an unselfish lover. An unselfish lover is a giving person. In your relationship, you show up to give. Let me stop there. For those of you who the world centers around you, in your relationship... (laughs) You show up to give. You show up to give. Not, not just allow access. Because you know, we have those people, you, you just better be glad I let you be around me. <laughs> you show up to give. You show up to give, and you give in part because you enjoy the You enjoy blessing your partner and being of benefit to him or her. You like making your partner happy. You like being a blessing to your partner. Some of y'all just cut me off. You like being a blessing. You like putting a smile on his face. You like putting a smile on her face. You like giving them things. You, and I'm not talking about gifts. I am talking about time and attention and all you like. And also, you are motivated to give by what you are receiving. It's an exchange. I give to you. I'm excited about Uh, how you feel when I give to you, you give to me. I'm excited about what I'm receiving, which makes me want to give more. It's an exchange. But if, watch this, if one person is simply a receiver, we're never going to get what we're supposed to. You show up, does this make sense? You show up to give. You show up to give. There are two types of giving that I, I believe. I talked about this, and I thank you all for who, who purchased Happier Endings the last time. I talked about this in Happier Endings. Uh, there's a chapter called The Low End. The Low End. And I, I, I talk about the fact that the low end of the relationship or the low end of my relationship ability and skills are the things that are normal for me and sustainable for me. This is the stuff that I just do normally. This is the stuff that is sustainable for me. And that's the, ne- the, the level of giving. Watch this. Normal and sustainable. Watch this. You cannot fall in love with the special edition of them. <laughs> okay. You need, to, you need to decide to love the normal, sustainable activity that they have. What's normal? What's, let me help the fellas. I tell the fellas, listen, uh, don't, don't, don't do what you can't sustain. Okay? Okay, I told y'all the last time I was about this person that I, I, I didn't date because I knew I didn't, have an, I didn't make enough money. And here's what, here's what we will do. We will, we will break our budget dating you. We watch this, and you want us to, but you really don't. Guess what? Because that ain't sustainable. Okay? So I get you used to a level of existence in the dating process that I know my bank account can't sustain. And then once we come together, you see a huge de- decrease in what I am able to consistently give you because I gave you something that was abnormal and unsustainable. Uh, I told you last time, and, and, and I, I teach these things because I've gone through it. And so uh, I really messed up when I started dating my wife. I messed up big, and it hurt, it hurt our marriage early on. And, it, and it, 
it hurt our marriage and annoyed me. Okay. Because okay. here's what, because in the dating process, here's what I would do. I would, uh, you know, my, my wife has an interesting schedule. So I would just rearrange my schedule to fit into whatever time slot that she had. Okay, I would rearrange my schedule, but when I rearranged my schedule, I then had to call my staff and say, okay, I need y'all to do this, this, and this, and that. I ain't coming in. And I need y'all to do this, this, and that, because I won't be there till tonight. And I kept rearranging my schedule in order to, to fit in. So she got used to me being accessible at times that I could not continue to be accessible. So my staff is calling me saying, man, we need you here. This has got to happen and that's got to happen. So I got all of this stuff that's starting to fall apart. Now I'm creating this image that I can always be there. But when I have to go back to normal, then I've gotten her used to something that I can't sustain. You, in your, those of you who are dating, stop making your partner think you ain't got nothing to do but tend to them. <laughs> it's not normal. It's not sustainable. Here's, here, here's, here's the other kind of giving. Watch this. It's the sacrificial. And sacrificial is usually unsustainable. I talk about the high end. The high end are, is the things that I am capable of doing with God's help every now and then. <laughs> That's my high end. Everybody has a low end. Everybody, I, I can do this every now and then with God's help. Okay? It's like that person that's really not a singer. But God blesses them one time in service. And they just anointed and powerful and they hitting all the right notes. And then they start believing I'm a singer for real. And so then now they want to do reg. And they're like, no, no, that was a special grace. That was God with you that day. <laughs> that was God with you that day. No, 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 we don't know. And here's what we do in the dating process in our relationships. We get people to connect with our high end. And when you get people to connect with your high end, that thing that you can only do every now and then and that you can only do with the help of God, it's not sustainable. And then you, your partner's now disappointed because you are not what they thought you were. That's why I tell, I coach all of my sons and daughters in ministry who are single, don't date your fans. Don't date your fans. Do not date, those of you, music ministry, worship ministry, whatever, do not date your fans because you have nowhere to go but down. They are attracted to your anointing and attracted to your ministry effort. And the anointing and ministry effort are attractive and they see you a certain way and they actually think that who you are when you're ministering, that's who you are all the time. And I'm not saying that there's a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. I'm not saying that you're a bad person. You are just not that person all the time. They don't think you get tired. They don't think you get annoyed. They don't think you get musty. They don't think you get... Oh, I... Okay. Ooh, that's angel sweat. No, it ain't. I need a shower. <laughs> Don't, don't, you have nowhere to go. It's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. So here's what happened. You got to be a giving person. N number two, I got to hurry. Y'all play too much. I got to go. Yeah, okay. That the, that the unselfish lover is also knowledgeable. A caring partner is an attentive partner. You cannot help but please your mate when you meet 
a current or consistent need. I told you last time that, that, that marriage is about signing up to meet somebody else's needs and expectations for the rest of your life and choosing somebody who signed up for the same thing. In order to do that, you got to be attentive. You got to be, you got to be attentive. You, you got to pay attention. You've got to pay, you got to pay attention. You can't, you can't, you can't be ignorant or illiterate about your own mate. And selfish people don't know nothing about you because they don't care anything about you. All they care is do you do what I need? Uh, years ago, this is probably before some of you were even born, uh, there was a couple out of L.A., uh, Frank and Bunny Wilson, they wrote a book called The Master's Degree. And the premise of The Master's Degree was this, is that can you get a graduate degree in your partner? That you don't just need an undergraduate degree in your partner, because that is about tests and, and papers, and, but gradu grad school is about comprehension absorption and being able to execute. Do you know your partner well enough that you can get a master's degree in your partner? A selfish person doesn't care. I've got to be attentive. I've got to be attentive. To do so, you have to pay attention. You have to remember what you see and hear. You have to be observant. You have to make mental notes. Take physical notes. I told, hey, listen, there's some, there, when my wife and I were dating, I used to just roll off certain dates to her, you know, and it was always impressive. I would roll off the date of our first date. I would roll off the date of our first kiss. I would roll off the date of the first, you know, restaurant. Uh, I would roll off the date. The, the first time we say it, I love you, I would just roll that stuff off, and it was just blowing her away. That stuff was in my phone. <laughs> okay? That stuff was in my phone. But I cared enough to take the notes. Are you I, I want, I, I, once I found out what her, her favorite fragrance was, I put that in my phone. Once I found out what, what, her what her favorite flower was, I put that in my phone. Because I got a whole lot of stuff that I'm thinking about. And I, a whole lot of stuff that I'm trying to do. And I may not be able to remember this stuff off the cuff. So, but I cared enough to make a file. To make a file. Now, some of us need that kind of help. I do. Some of you, once this, you got it, no, I got to write it down. But at least care enough. I wish we were doing this in a small group because I would, I would ask you some questions about your mate that you should be able to answer and see if you can actually answer them. What's, what's their, favorite, their favorite food and what's their favorite fragrance and what, 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 what store they like to go to and what... Y'all looking a little blank. <laughs> Y'all looking a little blank. Okay. You know, what, for, for those of us who are older, what's her favorite, what's her favorite dressmaker? What's her favorite, what, what's, I don't know. What, what Y'all looking a little blank. A, an unselfish lover is knowledgeable. What does he or she like? What puts a smile on his or her face? Are you knowledgeable? Watch this. Being a knowledgeable partner means that you invest the time and the energy to be attentive. And you are willing to be responsible for the information you gather. Here's what I mean. Um, when you ask questions, be willing to be responsible for the information you got. Okay. Here, here, here's a mistake I used to make. Uh, now, my day is full, packed, but then being a good partner, I'll say, uh, anything you need me to do today? Okay, anything you need me to do today? Because that's, that's a good partner. Now, I have no space in my, in my day for her to make any requests. <laughs> I have no space. So I'm hoping 
she's going to say, oh, no, nothing. I'm good. I, I, just, I just wanted to see if there was anything you needed. Knowing I have no space to meet the need. I have no space. But if she says, yes, I need you to do this, this, and that. Oh, now am I willing to be responsible for the information I just got? You know what? This, is, this has been bothering me at work, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to deal with it, and it's starting to mess with my head and all of that. You know, is there anything you want to talk about? Yeah, this has been bothering me at work, and I, 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 and, and I ain't really, I was just trying to be nice. <laughs> that was the old me. I didn't really want to know. I was just trying to be nice. I'm on to something else. Can you be attentive enough and create enough margin in your life that there's actually space for a partner? Some of you really need to remain single because you have no space for a partner. You got too much going on to commit to a relationship. And what you really want, you really don't want a companion. You really want some company you trust. See, there's a difference between company and a companion. See, some of y'all just might as well admit it and just, and just thank God for the integrity. Listen, you want somebody who's around when you want them to be, not when you don't want them to be, available when you want them to be, and unavailable, and don't call you for nothing, and don't bother you. Just be there when you need them. <laughs> Bruh, sis, that ain't a companion. That's company you trust. You didn't show up to give. You showed up to receive. And you don't really care what they like as long as they like you. I got to hurry. How much time I got? I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Okay. Listen. Am I willing to be, am I willing to be, um, take responsibility for the knowledge that I get? I asked you a question, can I wait on the answer? Let me hurry through this, watch this. Last trait I want to deal with, the unselfish lover is, real easy, selfless. Selfless and sacrificial are not synonymous in this case. In a healthy reciprocal relationship, the selfish lover is also secure and satisfied. There's a difference between being selfless and sacrificial. When I'm sacrificial, I'm giving up. But when I'm selfless, I'm also satisfied. I'm also secure. But I'm also making sure that I think about you. I'm making sure that I create margin in my life to meet your needs as well. A couple things real quick. We're out of time. Here's some concluding questions to consider. Number one, this is probably the most important one. Which are you more naturally or conditioned to be, a giver or a receiver? Are you more naturally a giver or are you more naturally a receiver? My wife is more naturally a giver. I cannot outgive her, no matter how hard I try. I cannot outgive her. She is more naturally a giver. Some people are more naturally, if you are more naturally a receiver, then you have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you to be a giver. Does that make sense? Let's go on. Uh, what are some of the ways your partner consistently behaves unselfishly? And the real other question is, what are some of the ways you consistently behave unselfishly? Let's go on. Is there space in your relationship to mention or critique selfish behavior without causing additional conflict? I've done a whole seminar on this one. Can you discuss a problem without it becoming a problem? Can you bring up something that needs to improve without it becoming a... Now, with a selfish person who didn't want to give you anything in the first place, and then you got the nerve to say they not meeting standard, 
Oh, they're going to have attitude forever. Let me hurry. Next one. Uh, gratitude and appreciation can be motivators for unselfish behavior. Ask, are you aware of how your partner likes to be appreciated? That's a real important thing. You, you buying her gifts and that's not how she likes to be appreciated. You bought him a new pair of J's and he really just wants you to stop waking up every day with an attitude. Skip the J's. Can a, can a brother just get a smile in the morning? <laughs> Are you aware of how your partner likes to be appreciated? Last one that I'll deal with, we got. Um, the secret of being uh, loved is being lovely. The secret of being lovely is being unselfish. I won't deal with the rest. Please, I'm trying to get you to understand that if we're gonna do this thing right, you gotta show up to give. You gotta be willing to be knowledgeable about your partner, and you gotta be selfish. And when you put all of that in a bowl, you gotta care. And I think I told you last time, and if I didn't, I, 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 uh, I'll tell you this time, I say it everywhere I go. You can love without caring. Our definition of love is, and I'm not talking about biblical definition, but our definition of love in, in romantic relationships is more sentiment, deep emotional connection. I don't know what I would do if you ever left me, but while I'm here, you ignore me. So you have, you have deep emotional connection. So the meaning tell me it only matters if I'm absent. You can love and stop caring, and you always can tell when a person has stopped caring. Their attitude, they can do the same thing, but the whole spirit of it is. You, know, you cook the same meal, but you stop caring. Here. <laughs> it's in there if y'all want to eat. <laughs> All I'm asking you to do is, is be unselfish and because, let, if, if you don't hear anything else, people are done, healthy people at least, healthy people are done letting you be absent in the relationship. Treat them any kind of way in the relationship just because you think you so wonderful. You, I'm sorry, sis, to some healthy brothers out there, it ain't, enough, it ain't that much fine in the world. I'm sorry, fellas, to some healthy sisters, it ain't that much money and that much looks and that many nice cars and... and in the world, especially for those of us who have raised our children correctly. Quick story, I'll pray. My, my daughter turns 30 uh, in, a, in a couple of weeks. And so she says, Daddy, I'm so sick of your gender. I said, well, we do now. Um, so she has this baking business on the side and she goes to this restaurant every weekend and, and they, you know, and so everybody's coming to the table and they're trying to holler at her. And I'm like, no, they need to buy some cakes and cookies and not with them going about their business. We, we gotta make money here. And so uh, she says, Daddy, what's crazy is they think they impress me with where they claim they wanna take me. And she says, Daddy, thank you. She said, because you took me to five-star restaurants when I was 10. 
you, you took me on cruises when I was 11. So there's nothing that they're trying to impress me with that impresses me because I've already had all of that. And there are so many shallow people out here who still think that they can just be absent in a relationship, impress you every now and then, and get what they want. And I say, no, we ain't falling for that no more. Father, in Jesus' name, we want to be who we're supposed to be. We want to have the relationships we're supposed to have. Help us, Father, even those of us who have selfish tendencies, deliver us so that we can be in healthy relationships. For those of us who owe our mates an apology for our selfish acts, help us now, Father, to be unselfish in our relationships. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be out in the back for those of you who still want to come back. Thank you for so much, Pastor, for having me.